<laughs> okay guys, so uh, we're going to continue with uh, our lectures uh, that we're going to talk about again. Uh, our blood pressures, uh, uh, how to increase your blood pressure, but this is uh, long term we're going to discuss about. And for the long terms, usually uh, that involves uh, this pathway called renin angiotensinogen aldosterone system, okay? And we'll talk about what that actually means. Uh, this is a long term, uh, which is slow chains uh, in flow over a period of days or weeks or months, you know? So we're basically we're talking about increase or decreases uh, in the physical sizes and number of tissue blood vessels. Uh, uh, that's what usually it does. And uh, this is uh, this is pathway primarily primarily to focus on how to increase the blood volume and how does that uh, increase your blood pressure okay uh, so basically how does this process gets activated right remember quickly uh, what happened we previously we talked about the short term plays a role uh, short term uh, uh, changes which which involve neuronal controls a lot all right uh, that plays a huge uh, use role in in um, uh, in changing your blood pressures uh, by changing the diameters or try changing the increase in heart rate uh, uh, or changing the venous return uh, and we tell, we discuss about that right but today we're primarily primarily we're going to focus on renin how does this renin actually gets activated right so let's say uh, this person we're talking about is a depletion so on blood volume okay somehow he got into car accident so there's a uh, uh, there's a loss of a lot of, a lot of blood volume uh, and somehow we need to increase the uh, uh, the blood, blood volume of this person, okay, and how does this renin play a role into it, okay? So remember, first thing is that the short rapid changes happens, right? So one of the most important things we're going to talk about is obviously if you quickly talk about it, this is obviously left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, right? Here, right? And then I'm I'm making a one diagrams, and this shows uh, the the renal artery right here. Uh, this I'm making this as going to only one organ because kidney is involved in this renin pathway. So the kidney has a many very important functions on regulating your blood pressure, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on uh, because kidney also has this offend arterial, especially has a better receptors. Okay, uh, they also have a better receptors, and remember, better receptor with these are pressure measuring device. Okay, and then each nephrons has better receptors so how many nephrons in our body there are like about 2.4 million nephrons and that means that's how much uh, your better receptors are located in your kidney specific affinity materials all right so now so whenever there is let's say remember how before there was there was already change that happens right which is uh, constrictions of your pet this is going to be if i'm talking about this is my renal okay and also i drew one nephron here but there are millions of nephron and this is my proximal conveyor tibials uh this is going to be the loop of Hanley. uh this is going to be distal conveyor tibials and the collecting ducts collecting ducts all right and and obviously this is going to be my afferent arterioles so let me make this as afferent arterioles this is going to be my glomerular capillaries uh, this is going to be my efferent arterioles and this is going to be my peritubular capillaries so the kidney the the way it works is that they have like you know two capillaries in the kidney right so these are called peri peritubular capillaries and then from the peritubular capillaries it goes uh, to the it drains into the, the veins and vena cava and then it goes to the right atrium. That's how easy it works, right? Now, what happens is that there is, especially in the fent arterials, obviously these arterials, they have this, the smooth muscle cells, okay? And these smooth muscle cells, these are modified smooth muscle cells, okay? So we can call them as uh, this with the red, the circular muscles, which are modified uh, uh, smooth muscle cells, or because they're kind of like circulating around, we can also give this name given for it, given for this. Okay, we can call them modified smooth muscle cells. We can call them because it's kind of like we can call them a pericytes. Okay, we can call them, and then they also call glome, uh, glome, uh, glomerular uh, glomerular glomerular cells. The reason why they because they have those. Uh, renin is there, okay, they're called glomerular cells. They're also called juxta, juxta, G U X A, juxta, uh, glomerul, glom, uh, glomerular cells. Okay, well, this is uh, this is J G cells, all right. Uh, these are the different names that is given for for this, but for this uh, modified small cells, peri size glomer, glomerular cells, juxta glomerular cells, right, and then. Uh, and then on the on the distal conveyor cells, or the early part of distal conveyor cells, they have these cells. These the black cells you see. These are very very dense. Okay, and these dense these cells are called macular denser cells. Okay, and these are macular denser, and these are these are very these are the macular denser because they're they're chemo sensor. They're very very sensitive to sodium and chloride. Okay, these are these are chemo sensor cells, and just a glomerular size one that contain like a lot of this, you know, these baroreceptor cells, right? And then also they have. 
they were reaching like uh, your uh, uh, it's a beta 1 ergenic receptors as well the ki kidneys also very very rich in uh, uh, beta 1 uh, ergenic receptor that's what uh, uh, that's what it is so this guy's a beta one, uh, beta one, very very rich in beta one, and then uh, this one also contains uh, the granules. Those granules contains very very important enzyme, guys. This enzyme is called renin. Okay, and then the what is uh, what is uh, connecting uh, between your juxtaglomerular cells and your macular dense is this cells. These cells have a lot of names, and I want you guys to remember this. These are called Polkisense. Polkisense cells. There's also called LASIK cells, okay, and they're also called, okay, because they're called extra glomerul glomerul mesangial cells, okay. So extra glomerul they're called extra mesangial cells. Simply, so remember this. This there's, the reason why I'm naming all these muscles. These are called macular dense sections. These are called these cells that are between your juxtaglomerular cells and your uh, uh, macular dense. These are called LASIK cells or Polky cells or they're extra mesangial cells because they're they're outside located, right? That's what they call extra mesangial because they they also have intra mesangial cells also, okay? And at this side, these are these are parasites are juxtaglomerular because juxta is near near the glomerul near, near the glomerul. That's what they are called juxtaglomerular cells, right? All together, they combine. They combine. They call this a juxtaglomerul apparatus, okay? Juxtaglomerul a p p r a t u s. That's what they call, okay? Juxtaglomerular apparatus, that's what they call. All these three combined. Now, now really what happens is that, look, when, because these guys are very, very rich in a beta 1 arsenic, beta 1 arsenic receptor, right? And with that, what is happening is a beta, beta with the beta 1, obviously this is going to have like GS pathway is going to play a role. And then when the sympathetic, when the sympathetic tones uh, try to constrict this, right? Remember, when they constrict the afferent arterials of kidneys, you're trying to maintain the what? You're trying to decrease your uh, radius. When you decrease your radius, what is happening? You're increasing resistance. When you increase your resistance, what happens? You increase your blood pressure, right? Or you increase your diastolic pressure. So one is your sympathetic tone. When they constrict the sympathetic tone, right, what happens? That renin releases. So that's a one way to renin release, okay? So renin is going to release here. Okay, let me make this as renin here. Okay, that's a one way to, let me make this in red actually. Let me make this renin in red here. So that's, this is how the renin releases, okay? That's one more. Let, let me make this renin, okay? Renin releases, that's one thing. So whenever there is a, what happens? When the constrictions happen, right? Then what is happening is that there is going to be, re, uh, there is going to be uh, the renin release. And whenever there is, there's decreased radius, that means the flow is also decreasing, right? When the flow is decreasing, what is happening? Everything that is flowing from here is going to be very, very slow, right? Because remember, this is a filtration because they have the sphenostrated capillaries in the, the glomerulus. When it's filtering, right, it's filtering very slowly, right? When it's filtering very, very slowly, what is happening here in the macular densa, when it reaches the macular densa, what happens? This chemo sensor, this macular densa, they, they have, they sense of low sodiums plus low chloride, okay? And they're very, very sensitive to sodium. They love salt, okay? So whenever they, whenever they sense that is a, the, 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 the amount of salt they're usually received, if they're not getting, then they get angry, okay? They, they sense that there's being a low sodium. And they, what they do, they will stimulate the cells and they will stimulate uh, the juxtaglomerular cells and they release more renin, okay? Now that's uh, another way of releasing renin. Other one is that, Whenever the blood is having the perfusion, okay, what is happening? The perfusion is low, right? So because there's a less perfusion, the lead flow, low fl uh, flow is coming out. Then what happens? This arterial itself will produce like some of the important uh, compounds like endothelin or in this case, uh, 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 in this case, like you know, endothelin or like thromboxins or that kind of compound, and they'll do further constrictions, okay? Because these are local metabolized, and that also, okay, decrease in that also release in renin, okay? So decrease in perfusion pressure, number one, the sympathetic tone, and also the decrease in the osmolarity, which is the sodium and chloride to the macular densa. This all, because of all of those reasons those three those are the three main reasons that releases renin okay more renin and renin is an enzyme okay now the renin is going to come okay when the renin is going to come it's going to go to the efferent arterioles from the peritoneal capillaries and it's going to go to the your your inferior vena cable right and when they go there really what happens is that 
you know, this liver play a very, very important role because liver synthesize this compound called alpha-2 globulins. What does alpha-2 globulins mean? Alpha-2 globulins is same as angiotensinogen. Okay, angio, I'm gonna write this here. I'm gonna write down here. This is A-N-G, angiotensinogen, okay? And angiotensinogen is a very, very big compound. It has about like 485 amino acids, okay? But don't worry about it, we don't have to know about this. But those out of those 400 amino acids long, only like their 12 amino acid, they're functionally active, all right? And obviously this angiotensinogen level can go off if you give corticosteroid, okay? Or if you have a high level of a corticosteroid or if you have a high level of estrogens, you know, that do play a role into uh, having an increased level of angiotensinogen. But what they do is that they're only like 12 like functional active uh, amino acids let's say okay and these they're obviously that means they, these are what these are peptide right the peptide the peptide it's a peptide compounds right so what they do is that when the renin comes in right when the renin comes in what happens is that when the renin comes in really what happens is that it will work into the two of these amino acids, okay, especially in, in between leucine and valine. So it cleaves the leucine, it cleaves between the leucine and valine, okay, leucine and valine of the, of the 12 amino acids, and it, it makes it, it makes it a uh, angiotensinogen number one. So when they throw two amino acids, now this angiotensinogen is, how many amino acids is this one? This is going to be my, now DECA, DECA amino acids, okay. So this engine is the deca amino acids compound, right? And then, still this is an inactivate, this is still the, this engine is also inactivate right now, right? So it's just floating around here. So remember, liver comes, center, liver comes this engine right? right? The renin extract the two amino acids, leucine and valine, right? And then after that, this guys become your engine number one, which is your deca which is a deca, uh, deca amino acids, right? Now, this angiotensin will go where? It'll go go from the right atrium, right ventricle, it will pulmonary, artery, and it will go to the lungs, okay? Guys, in the lungs, it's gonna see this beautiful, 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 beautiful enzyme, and that is called ACE, okay? Look, everybody knows that it's located in lungs, you know? Everybody knows. But, you know, some students know more than average, you know. What they know is they're located exactly nowhere. Ex they're located the specific place in the lungs. And what are they? They're actually located in the pulmon. This is, what is this? This is a capillary baits of pulmonary, right? The pulmonary capillary baits. And those capillary baits have what? The single layer of endothelial cells, right? On the surface of the single layer of endothelial cells, they have this ACE enzyme located here. Let me make this ACE enzyme here like this. Okay? ACE enzymes. Okay? But remember guys, but you know, some above the average students may know that too, but you know what, but some people know more than average, you know, some people know, like they're very, very intelligent. What they also know, know that is, ACE enzyme is not only located in the lungs or the endothelial cells of pulmonary capillary beds, but they're also located in the endothelial, every endothelial cells, they're also located in kidneys, they're also located in the brain. Okay, they all are located there. The only difference is that the density of the S enzyme is greater in your lung or the pulmonary capillary beds of, of your lungs. Because of that, we often use the ACE enzyme. And we need to know this because remember, the lot of drugs works into this, okay? They're like the enapril or, or enapril or lisinopril is given and those are called ACE inhibitors, okay? Or captopril, they're given to inhibit uh, uh, this, uh, this ACE inhibitor so that way it doesn't convert this angiotensin is number one into angiotensin number two because angiotensin is not angiotensin is number two is a very very important important compound and it has a lot of functions okay so so that's what a lot of times the ACE inhibitors is given all right so now when this guys come this ACE you know what does ACE does ACE you know ACE sort of like cleaves into the C terminus of this uh, this angiotensin is in gen number one and when it does that it again removes like two amino acids from there so it makes us octa which means eight right so octa octa amino acid which is going to be my angiotensin is number two okay this is the key guys this is the key so now what is this gonna do okay one thing these guys do is this okay 
one thing, one thing these guys do is that, okay, these guys go because these guys have receptors located in your brain. Where though? These guys, you know, in the brain, like there is a, this area I made this, okay, the, sorry for the drawing, but this is, I made this as, a, let's say this is my phronics, okay, and then up the, above the phronics, you have a copros colossum, right? And below the phronics, there's something called this, this small is called, they call this as a soft phronical area, like SFO, like soft phronical organ, like SUB uh, phronical organ, right? And then below, like, and then there is a, uh, between the optic chiasms and then also the anterior commissures of your third ventricles, there is something called uh, uh, lamina terminalis, okay? And in, in, in front of those lamina terminalis, they have this thing called OVLT, organum vasculosum lamina terminalis, okay? Organum vasculosum lamina terminalis. And in between that, Okay, let me make this a little different here. Let's say this is my organovasculosum, right? And then what is coming down here from here is, is something like this. And then let's make this as my SFO, which is so right here, right? And then the re why this is significant is because here, what happens is the blood brain barrier is broken down here, okay? Because the blood brain barrier is broken down here, what happens is that this angiotensinogen number two or like some osmo, or the, you know, the, some lipid, whatever the plasma can actually. Uh, can diffuse through this, okay? Because it can diffuse, it, this guy can sense it, okay? And these organ vasculosomes, what they have around, they have the clusters of cells. These cluster of cells are very, very sensitive to the osmolarity, okay? And and this this thing that I drew in the black, this one is called, okay? This one is let's say this one, which is OVLT, and then this is called my median, okay? Preoptic, what is this? Median preoptic nucleus. Okay, this one. And then, look, this is guy, guys, this is very important, okay? These guys, because of that, this angiotensinogen can go, and then what happens is that these guys have receptors, which is on the median preoptic pre nucleus, and then it can stimulate this. When they can stimulate that, what's going to happen is that it will increase your thrust center, or it will increase your th thrust behavior. That's what, that, these guys increase your thrust center. So if you increase your thrust center, what happens? Thrust center, you want to drink more water, right? So you will drink more water. So when you drink more water, what happens? You're increasing your blood volume, right? When you increase your blood volume, what happens? You're increasing your, when you increase your blood volume, what happens? You increase your preload, right? When you increase your preload, what happens? You increase your cardiac output, right? When you increase your cardiac output, what happens? You increase your systolic pressure. When you increase your systolic pressure, what happens? You increase your blood pressure, right? That's the one way to do it. That's what the, that's what, uh, that's what one angiotensin enzyme number two does, okay? Now, angiotensin is what also does it, it comes down, down here, okay? All the way is this, let me make this in a black color. This angiotensin comes all the way, color comes, and it is a very, very stronger, uh, with the GQ pathway, obviously, with the GQ pathway, because it is bound with the IP3, okay? It bounds the GQ pathway, okay, and the GQ pathway, and what happens, it will act, it is possible lipase C. From the possible lipase C, it will, what, break down your uh, PIP2, which is phosphatidyl initial by phosphate, and it will become your IP3 and your DAG, right? With that compound, what happens is that it constricts this, constricts this efferent arterials. When you constrict the efferent arterial, what happens? You increase the glomerular filtration, right? So that way, that way you don't want to have, you don't want kidney to damage, okay? So that's the one way to they, they do prevent a kidney, one thing, they do. Other thing they do is, they also have receptor on the efferent arterials, right? When, what they do is, when they constrict the efferent arterial, again, with the GQ pathway, what happens? You're decreasing the radius, right? You decrease, sorry, you decrease the diameter. When you decrease the diameter, you decrease the radius. When you decrease the radius, what happens? You're decreasing the resistance. When you increase the resistance, what happens? You're increasing your, uh, you increase your diastolic pressure. When you increase your diastolic pressure, what happens? You increase your blood pressure, or you, you maintain, or you increase your mean arterial pressure. That's what you're doing, right? That's the one thing that they also do that. So remember, angiotensinogen increases the thrust center. Angiotensinogen also do constriction of the FN arterials. They also, they're very, they do a constriction of FN arterials, but they're also very powerful constriction of FN arterials too, okay? Now, one more thing I forgot to mention is that, guys, this angiotensinogen also has one more functions here. Like in the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus, like let's, I made this hypothalamus already, right? This is going to be median aminase, okay, median aminase, and let's make this posterior pituitary and anterior pituitary, right? And then what happens is that this from there, let's make this as a hypothalamus right here, let's, let's make this hypothalamus. What happens is that from the hypothalamus, what happens is that uh, they, they, there will be release of, uh, I mean, this hypothalamus is where this, there's a nuclear which is called supra optic nucleus, supra 
optic nucleus. And these supraocules are, are very, very uh, known to uh, synthesize this arginine vasopressin, right? Arginine, arginine vasopressin, right? Or we can simply say ADH, right? Antidiarotic hormones, right? So they synthesize, and when they synthesize, what happens? These guys, obviously for the white bundles, they'll go and they'll store at the post repository. Guys, ADH is not synthesized in post repository. They are synthesized in supraoptic nucleus, okay, in the hypothalamus, but they're stored in the post repository. That's something you have to remember, right? So, angiotensinogens have receptors on there, on the supraoptic nucleus, so when that happens, they'll stimulate and they'll release more, more ADH, right? ADH. So let me erase this and make this ADH. So whenever there's ADH, okay, whenever there's ADH, there's ADH right here. It has two roles, okay? There, there are receptors, okay? There's V1 and then V2 receptors, okay? And I'll tell you where exactly they look. If there are less ADH is released, then usually those, those ADH goes and work into your kidney on your collecting tubule, on your collecting ducts, okay, on your collecting duct, ducts. They, for, for the, there's receptors, these are V2, these are seven pass membrane receptors, okay? Uh, these are V2 receptors. And then there are GS pathway. These are, uh, these are V2 receptors, okay? And this is, this is for ADHD, okay? And with the G, GS, remember what happens. With the GS, like, I'm not gonna go detail, but remember, uh, with the cyclic AMP, you can go to adenocyclase, right? Adenocyclase, and then from adenocyclase, you convert ATP into cyclic AMP, and you make more protein kinase A, right? So when protein kinase A, what happens is inside this AD, inside this collecting tubule cells, uh, collecting tubule, these are, these are cells, they have they have re, they have a lot of these channels. These are water channels, okay? These are called aquaporin channels for number two. Aquaporin number, aquaporin water channels for two, okay? And then what happens? These guys are inside the inside the cells. So when these guys phosphorylate, what happens is that these guys go to the to the collagen tubules and started started phosphorylating and making a water channels here like this, okay? Like this. So when you, whenever do you do that, what happens? Whatever the water comes in, it'll reabsorb, reabsorb, and it'll go. And the water will diffuse through the, it will, water will go diffuse through. What happens to the, to the plasma? Okay. So when you go, water goes to the plasma. What happens? You increase the blood volume. When you increase the blood volume, what happens? You increase your preload. When you increase your preload, what happens? You increase your cardiac output. When you increase your cardiac output, what happens? You increase your systolic pressure. Right. That's the one way to do it. And other thing is that this ADH, if you have, if you have a lot of ADH is also released. Okay, based on the you know, based on the level of angiotensinogen number two, this can also have receptors on V1 receptor, which is on the, on the, on your arterial side, okay? So this V1, what do they do with the GQ pathway again? It's a GQ pathway, it's a GQ pathway for V1 receptor. They're powerful constrictor, okay? They can do constrictor. And when you consider what happened? You increase your resistance, right? You decrease your radius, you decrease your diameter, you increase your resistance. When you increase your resistance, what happens? You increase your TPI. When you increase your TPI, what happens? You increase your diastolic pressure. When you increase your diastolic pressure, what happens? Your blood pressure goes up. That's also these guys do, okay? Now, look at the how many functional angiotensins the number two has, okay? Now, one more thing they do. I mean, the couple of things they do. This angiotensin is number two, okay? What they do? These guys will come. This will come specifically in the proximal tubular cells, okay? Again, they have receptors located on this is called proximal, okay? Make, make this proximal tubule cells, okay? Tubule, the proximal tubule cells, they come here, right? And they have also, again, seven pass membrane receptors, okay? Not gonna go very detail about this, guys, okay? So now GQ pathway again with this, okay? Obviously, it's going to be IP3 and DAG, all right? So with that, when they, with the, when the phosphorylate, they do. Remember, there are channels here. Remember, usually proximal convective cells, they usually reabsorb like about 65% of your uh, like sodiums or like water, right? These are, they, they do because you have to retain all that, right? And then when they retain from the proximal tubular cells, it'll go to parietal capillaries and it'll go back to the system, right? So there are specific channels located here on the basal lattice surface, right? One channel is, okay, remember, every cell has what? Every cell has sodium. ATP pump, right? Let me make this up. You're constantly throwing two potassium in, okay, in the cells, and you're throwing two, two sodium out, right? And they also have look. Yeah, so you that's what they're doing, right? Okay, let me make this one here, like throwing two sodiums out, right here, right? The fatty cavities. So here on the but look, this is going to be my this is gonna be my opical side, this is gonna be my basal lateral side, right? The basal lateral cell, every cell has this, has this, they're throwing three sodiums out. 
right? They are throwing the, the, and bringing two potassium inside the cell, right? That's why your cells are bags of potassium, right? Now, there is a special channel in located in the optical surface, which is what is this channel? These are counter transporter, or they're called anti pore. You're doing what are you doing is that you're throwing what is this? Is you're bringing sodium in, okay? But on the exchange of sodium, you're throwing the potassium. Oh, sorry, you're throwing the hydrogen in. So this is a this is called sodium uh, sodium proton exchanger or sodium yeah sodium proton exchanger right remember whenever sodium is coming down here okay when it's when it's on it because remember the high because remember the, the cell is low in sodium right so the high to low is always going to go high to low right so whenever so sodium is coming here what is happening is that it is generating energy okay because whenever this high to low comes we're generating and that ATP is utilized to throw this uh, it's it's proton into the lumen okay that's what these are called secondary uh, transport or these are secondary anti-port okay so that's what you're doing and this sodium what happens this sodium it will look the, with this ATPase pump what happens this sodium will go up okay now like watch this what is from here okay from the from the glomerule what is filtering here usually usually you're filtering like a potassium you're filtering right you're filtering like uh, chloride you're filtering you're putting sodium right you're putting bicarb okay you're filtering all that okay what happens is that this h plus whenever you throw in the lumen this h plus what happens is that it mixes with this bicarb okay and then it becomes your carbonic acid h2co3 and this carbonic and uh, uh, car carbonic uh, carbonic acid gets uh, what G gets destroyed and become your co2 plus water right this is what it usually happens Look, this filtered bicarb was mixed with the protons, and with the, because of the angiotensin agent, this is amplified. This uh, sodium is person amplified. There will be even more here and all that, right? So because of that, this H plus is destroying the filtered bicarb and making carbonic acid, and then with the this uh, and and with the help of this carbonic and hydrous enzyme, okay, with the carbonic and hydrous enzyme, you uh, you are breaking down uh, 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 this carbonic acid into CO two plus water, right? And remember, CO two is a lipid solid, right? So it can diffuse through from here okay when diffuse it through from here what is it going to happen it will mix with the water th that's present in the cell okay and what will happen it will become your what is this a carbonic acid h2 uh, co3 and then what will happen it will become and it will break down into h plus and then it will become your bicarb remember look and this h plus is what is going to happen to the h plus it will it will going to go out there and this bicarb is going to happen what this bicarb is going to come from this special transport here which is called anion exchanger okay anion exchanger whenever they throw bicarb into it they also bring a little bit of chloride so it bend, it maintain it maintain and whenever and we need bicarb because bi, bicarb is what because remember bi, bicarb having bi, bi, bicarb is a basic right uh, it provides a basic basic because, we do, because whenever there's a blood volume with depletions and all that stuff uh, we don't want to have the acidosis to produce in our system so bicarb prevents that okay so remember when the sodium goes out or sodium goes lumen, what happens is, you know the, the oftentimes I hear this uh, student saying that water follows sodium right and that is true because whenever there's a sodium is there sodium is going water also follows it so when the sodium is going bicarb is going to the your your your, your accessory fluid water is also going because water is following the sodium okay what is for sodium so whenever you're going sodium bicarb and water is for sodium what happens you increase the blood volume when you increase the blood volume what happens again you increase the preload when you increase the uh, preload what happens you increase your endosteric volume when you increase your endosteric what happens you increase your cardiac output when you increase your cardiac output you what happens you increase your slight pressure when you increase your slight pressure what happens you increase your blood pressure right that's what it is happening this is how they uh, this is how you increase the blood volume remember this is a long term long term thing right and this is a rule of angiotensin and number two is doing now Angiotensin adjunct done. What else it does? Angiotensin adjunct does. Look at this. You see this beautiful, beautiful this organ here. This is called adrenal gland actually. And adrenal gland has cortex and the medulla. And the cortex has like three different cells. These upper cells we call them a Jonah glomerulosa. Sorry guys, I don't know how to spell this. And this is a, it's called reticles. Jonah reticulars. Okay. And then the uh, this is sorry this is not reticular. This is called Jonah fasciculata. Fasciculata, and this is called Jonah reticularis. Okay, and these Jonah glomeruli are very, very important. 
we're gonna because zona physical though we're not gonna focus this into it because zona physical usually leads to uh, corticosteroid uh, you know uh, we'll talk about this when we talk about the endocrine systems uh zona reticularis are usually uh, important for producing androgens but we're gonna focus on Jonah glomerza because angiotensin is in number two has a receptors located here which is also again GQ receptors okay again GQ guys Jonah glomerza these guys you know and Jonah glomerus are are very important for producing what what these guys do Jonah uh, what angiotensin is they go and they will actually stimulate uh, like adoption synthesis enzyme okay and when they stimulate the synthesis enzyme what happens is that they are they are uh, they are important for producing this important important hormones which is called aldosterone remember this aldosterone is coming down here now this is called what it's called aldo aldosterone right and this aldosterone is a lipid solver guys it's a lipid solver meaning remember so far we're talking epinephrine or epinephrine all this stuff. they're all of the receptor located outside the cell surface but this aldosterone the receptor located inside the cell for surface because it's a it's it's a lipid solver okay it's a lipid solver because of that it can diffuse it to the cell so, and then they're they're luckily their receptors are located inside the cell membrane okay so here what happens is that maybe they're, they're like they, they can call you can call nuclear receptors or like zinc finger receptors okay so because because what happens is that there is a Oh, these guys, when the aldosterone comes into here, what happens is that these guys will activate certain genes. Let's make it, may, let's make this as certain genes, okay? Let, I'm gonna make this as three different types of genes. Actually, you know, let me make this three different type of genes because they have a different roles into it, okay? And then, because they go, these aldosterone go and they work into the cells of your uh, distal tubule cells, also collecting tubule cells, which are called principal cells, okay? They are called principal cells. What is it called? Principal cells. So they will, once they come, aldosterone comes in, they will, what they will do is, they will stimulate the, the nuclear, nuclear, uh, nuclear machine. Okay, when they nucle stimulate nuclear machine, what happens? They're gonna make a three different types of protein here. Okay? Three. One is going to be, if I'm talking about the, let's say, if I'm talking about the collection table cells, they are going to make, they're going to synthesize something called ENAC. What is ENAC? Endothelial sodium, sodium channel. Okay, and they will when they stimulate this. What that, what that happens? They will amplify the the productions of inact channels, and what they do, they provide a lot of this inact channels right here. Okay, there's a lot of this inact channels right here. Okay, inact channels right here. Okay, and these guys, whatever, whatever sodium is coming here, it will go here. And remember, they will also now this is for that one. Okay, and then this is also produce one more channel. They will synthesize the channel or which is going to be my sodium potassium ATPase. So they were constantly gonna throw three sodiums and bring two potassium in, right? So look, whatever sodium is coming in, what is happening here? What is what is happening here? With this, they amplify the productions of a sodium potassium channel as well. So whatever sodium is, the inact channel is bringing in, they are gonna, they're gonna be thrown out by sodium ATPase pump, okay? Three sodiums are bringing two potassium in, right? And then, they're making this another channel here too, and the protein channels, and this is going to be, these channels is very important. They're called, the name is called ROMK. R-O-M-K, what does this mean? Renal outer medullary potassium channel, which basically means you're throwing the potassium in here. So potassium is going right right here. So it's gonna go this way, okay? So look, you're throwing the potassium, because remember, with the sodium, with the sodium throwing, and bringing to potassium in. What, what is gonna happen to this potassium? The potassium is gonna go out from here, okay? Okay, that's why with, with, the, with this time, if in this case, you're gonna see a lot of potassium in your in your urine okay because you're throwing the potassium in and remember water follows sodiums water follows sodium so you increase the so you you you, you remember we're trying to increase the blood pressure right you're trying to blood volume so you with the inner channel at the at the collecting tubule cells you're making what you you you're reabsorbing the sodiums you're reabsorbing the water because water follows sodiums right and then you're throwing the potassium Okay, you're throwing the potassiums, so that's why you see a lot of potassium in, but you see less sodium, you see less water in your urine, okay? And also less chloride too, because remember, this guy's aldosterone, not only here works, it also works at the distal part of distal convertible, distal part convertible cells, and they are also produce these channels. And these channels are called, uh, let me just write it down here, okay? I, I, let me make it here. Uh, you know, let, actually, you know, let me, okay, let me just, Okay, just think about this. Right? Let me make it here, actually. Let me make this here. Okay, these guys, this channel, I'm just gonna make the channels. These channels is called NAC channels, which basically is a sodium chloride channel, okay? So sodium chloride channel, when they make sodium chloride channel, they're also reabsorbing sodium and chloride. That's also they're doing, right? 
Now they're also doing that. So because of that, you are reabsorbing sodium and chloride. You're reabsorbing uh, lots of water. You're reabsorbing sodiums. So because you're trying to increase the blood volume, when you increase the blood volume, you increase the blood pressure, right? So that's what you're doing. Okay. So now, quickly, if I have to review, what are the things the angiotensinogen uh, did here? Okay. One of the role of angiotensinogen is a is a very it's a very very power, powerful efferent constrictor. Okay. It also constricts efferent arterioles, which reduces the size of what. Uh, you size the radius of the diameter changes which, with the changing diameters you have increased resistance when you increase resistance you increase the torque pressure resistance when you increase the torque pressure resistance you increase the diastolic pressure when you increase the diastolic pressure you increase your mean arterial pressure and mean arterial as a because mean arterial pressure is a perfusion pressure you're maintaining the blood pressure right you did that you also they also worked on this proximal convertible cells and then they amplify the sodium and proteins enter transporter okay because of that what happened because of that there is a the reabsorption of sodium so amplified okay and you also reabsorb the bicarb right you made the new bicarb actually with this with these mechanisms and then water followed that so you increase the blood volume when you increase the blood volume what happens you increase the endastolic volume when you increase the endastolic volume you increase the preload when you increase the preload you have the cardiac output right you did that and also angiotensin in general what it did it can stimulate this supra uh, median pre nucleus and uh, with this because there's a broken blood brain barriers right because of that there's a cluster of cells that accumulated there and these are very very sensitive the osmo receptors the osmo sensors and they also are very very sensitive to what uh, or to angiotensin number two and because of that that increases uh, your thrust behavior so you want to drink more water so when you drink more water what you increase your blood volume right they also stimulate the Supraoptic nucleus, so they synthesize more uh, angiotensin, uh, sorry, anti hormones. And another name for this is arginine uh, uh, vasopressin, right? And they, if you have, if you have angiotensin uh, this ADH, it has a receptors on the V2 receptor on the, your uh, collection tubules, right? And then with the uh, with the V2 pathway, what happens? They're able to put aquaporin. Aquaporin is a water channel, by the way. They're put able to in the collagen tubules so that way. They're able to reabsorb the water. Okay, you when you reabsorb the water, you increase the blood volume, right? And also, what they did is, if there's a more ADH produced because the high level of angiotensin is the number two, these guys also have the V1 receptors on the on the blood vessels. And these guys with the GQ pathway, right? IP3 and then uh, DAG, they were able to do constrictions of that. Okay, what else they did? Angiotensin is also uh, went to the adrenal medulla, right? And when they when it went to the adrenal what it did, it worked on the, they have special receptors located on the, uh, this guys, what is this guy called? Zona glomerosa. And because they activate certain missionary of the Zona glomerosa cell by stimulating especially aldosterone synthesis enzyme, and they made a lot of this, they made aldosterone, and aldosterone lipid solver, right? When the lipid solver, and it can go, and it can go, especially when it's the principal, principal cells, at the distal convective cells, or the collection tubule cells, and what it did, it activated three, diff di three different types of uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear channels. Or, or nucleus so because of that they were able to make three different types of channels I mean in this case I mean I even talked about four different types of channels one is ENAC endothelial sodium uh, sodium channels which are for the reabsorption of the sodiums and the one is the ROMK which is the renal outer medullary potassium which is going to they put on the optical surface so they uh, they were secreting this uh, potassium out from there and also they make more the sodium uh, potassium ATPase where they're constantly throwing three sodiums and bringing two potassium in and they saw the potassium is going to be uh, gonna go go down okay so this is how so you guys will see the how you by by in this condition basically we're doing is we, we're increasing the blood volume okay and we also talked about this whole this Jonah glomero paradox and the role of renin actually yes important is the role of renin is very very important because this renin is produced by this apparatus okay these three different cells are here okay and they play a very very important role into it you know a lot of times like students don't like to remember the, all the names of cells but there's importance of this okay because sometimes Questions maybe ask you with a different way, so make sure it's it's important and all. We talked about the liver, the role of liver as well, all right? So this is this is how the renin angiotensinogen number two works uh, to increase your blood pressure, okay, or to maintain your mean arterial pressure, all right? So uh, uh, and also one more thing, guys, like you know, let me just tell you the a uh, couple of things, you know. Sometimes really what happens is like, let's say if you have a like a renal stenosis or some kind of if you have renal st stenosis then in that case you know you don't want to give like a drug which is uh, like ACE inhibitors okay all right so because what happens is that I mean if there's a renal st stenosis there then really what happens is that look if you have a lot of angiotensin in number two then that's that may not be good for you right so you got to be, be careful be careful with not only looking at 
uh, if you want to increase, in a, in, increase your blood pressure, you also have to look at the other areas where maybe there could be, like if there's stonosis is there, then you may not want to uh, uh, increase your angiotensin number two, all right? Um, uh, so that's what also you have to think about it. All right, I think, I think we'll, we'll end it here uh, for our renin pathway, and I hope I made it very clear to you guys. All right, thank you.